Well, thank okay, you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. We're just going to be relaxed. It's not. It's not anything deep. We're just going to have a chat. <laughs> going to have a chat. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's well, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you cool so much. That. Thanks so much for agreeing to um, not agreeing, yeah. but, but just being a part of this because I think your generation. I'm not making you sound old, by the way, but your generation is in, <laughs> is integral to this whole gospel music um, genre, I believe. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I yes. want to be having some conversations with people who have made moves in gospel music. That's not as documented as it should be. Um, as I believe that there's a legacy mm -hmm. that hasn't really been fulfilled. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, yeah, I hear, yeah. You, I hear you on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so, been missed out. I'm, yeah, it's been perhaps, missed out, and missed and out. and I'm not sure why. Um, because I I'm a person that I've I'm kind of in between generations. Um, so I was around right. for um for the generation for gigs and before social media and before the digital world i was around and yes. i appreciate that yeah but then i had to yes. move into the yeah. digital world as well <laughs> so but then there's a generation that wasn't yeah. around yeah wasn't around for you know records tapes you know waiting to find out what's going on that church announcement as opposed to facebook um flyers you know right. all of that so it's important we yep. document and we give people flowers while they're here so that's that's why right. i i do agree i agree with that one i think it's uh, it's definitely important mm -hmm. that uh, people uh, are aware of you know uh, especially when it comes to gospel music mm -hmm. you know how 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 groundbreaking it was especially back in the 80s uh, and uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, with the many groups that were out and about and uh doing what they were doing mm -hmm. back then i think it's most definitely important that people can can be aware of that as well so so it's really cool i think it's really good yeah, yeah. so that brings me to ask you who is junior robinson i mean oh. i know i know you um you know i've heard about yeah. you um growing up but um how did you get into gospel singing you know how did you get into it personally Okay, for for me, I grew up uh, in the church. I grew up uh, around gospel music from from the year dot, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, so it wasn't strange for me mm -hmm. uh, to you know to be listening to the likes of well back then uh, James Cleveland, Mahalia Jackson, Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. um, some other groups, uh, Dixie Hummingbirds, the Five Blind Boys of Alabama, mm -hmm. the Gospel Airs, and you know, um, there'll be some people who will be completely, they'll, they'll be on my page. They'll know who these who these yeah. groups are, who mm -hmm. these artists are, um, and uh, you know, so so that's this is what I grew up, and then obviously being at church, uh, being in a in a very lively Pentecostal church, mm -hmm. you know. Um, my 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 early visions of uh, of very uh, lively music was you know with my cousins uh, mm -hmm. you know my cousins were were leading the songs either playing guitar playing piano leading the 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 chorus leading and all that kind of stuff so you know uh, we I I've had a rich um, upbringing of of christian music which uh mm -hmm. is still around which which i'm still listening to so you know yeah. um so so you know growing up and then hearing this music either played in the house or or being at church i come from a singing family as well so mm -hmm. you know singing was the thing to do at the end of the day um so uh eventually my 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 dad inspired 
me and my two brothers to to sing mm -hmm. um and so we started singing in church uh and man i'm talking about gosh three three four years of age mm -hmm. you know um you know even before i can i can truly and and properly recollect but there's memories i have memories mm -hmm. of of moments when i was singing with my brothers and you know uh from from, from then um and then obviously that became more uh regular mm -hmm. uh first in the in the local church and then um more so in uh, like when we had church programs and you had a few other churches that would come uh mm -hmm. to, to the church programs and you know and then, they, and then they'd hear us and so that's where it all started for me mm -hmm. yeah um and uh yeah i mean i mean what else is there uh i i at home um i used to uh my, my, i mean my dad had this great collection of gospel music and mm -hmm. uh and i remember the times i used to walk past the living room and and i'd look into the living room and the living room was just dark mm -hmm. yeah but there was this music playing gospel music was playing and i'd walk past you know and i'd walk upstairs do what i'm doing come back downstairs and you know walking past the living room dark room and there's gospel music playing and, and i think one time i i i i looked in and it was my dad was just sitting on the on the sofa just with this you know sitting Chilling. back <laughs> ends up like this just soaking in the music you know mm -hmm. um, and I used to watch him do that very often and until one time I joined him I joined him in there uh, sat down just like him just sat mm -hmm. back and listened soaking in the music and then uh, it, it got to just me doing it myself uh, mm -hmm. from time to time um, and then that's when I started, that's when I really uh, got introduced, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to these artists. And so obviously James Cleveland was there. Um, I mean, my dad had so many albums of his, um, so I'd get caught up listening to that. But I think what the, the album that really struck it for me was Andre Crouch. Okay. Um, I've got confidence. Yeah, okay. I've got confidence album. Um, and, he was such a, uh, he was such innovative, and his his music still stands now. I mean, I can listen to that now, and not it doesn't feel dated to me. It feels very way ahead of its time, you know. And and as you were saying about your dad, um, right. I have a similar exactly. ex have a similar experience because um, we had the gram, you know, the music gram. Do you remember the music gram? Mm -hmm. We had the special oh, music yes. gram in our, um, we had a special music gram in our front room, which, you know, the front room's forbidden, isn't it? It's forbidden. Yes. You can't go in there. Special occasions. All right. It and and yeah. So yes. my, we have similar memories, Junior, because my, <laughs> I'm the youngest of my family and my early, I had to sort of dig deep to think, right. when did I start listening to gospel music and it was a similar thing but mine was jesse dixon right mine was jesse yes. dixon yes so and it just reminds me of the was it his Cross. first was it his first album it's the pink one all i can see i can visually see it's pink and it's got the song um christ has made a difference i know that the... album Right, right. That album. Yeah, uh, you bring and you bring the sun out. Yes, yes, yes. And yep. and Andre Crouch live in London. Oh yeah. As well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the youngest in my family, so I don't really know. I just remember those two albums just on rotation in in the front room, and you're allowed to go in there to listen, but don't jump because if you jump, it's got it's you know the record might scratch. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So just, but you know the excitement of the music. You just wanna, you want to move, in it. You want to move. I tell you, I tell you. Do you know what? I can recall one moment where, because uh, I got, I, w I was hooked on 
you could say I mean I was hooked on all gospel movies but the two albums that stood out was mm-hmm. was obviously Andre Crouch I've got confidence mm-hmm. and then James Cleveland had one called I'll do his will okay uh, and I tell you that album uh, it just blows me away because um you know and don't get me wrong because my dad had other albums of, of this artist and and mm-hmm. and it was it was just wonderful just to hear sermons he was you know you'd have albums of him just preaching mm-hmm. you know um and uh but there was this album that which was obviously studio setting kind of recording um and that first song that came out um don't you know i need him it's called um man that song was so uh modern it was unbelievable the groove Mm -hmm. the the just the style of that song was just it blew me away um and obviously you hear his voice his deep yeah growling voice Mm -hmm. very commanding very commanding (laughs) i mean he just blew me away but that album i remember you know i was listening to that album over and over i kind of got familiar with every single song that was on there mm-hmm. um and I, I remember i just i was singing every song to my mom you know uh just pretending i was performing uh, mm-hmm. right in front of my mom and i'm singing all the songs and um and it was it was so amazing and i can't forget that I just i won't forget that it was you know, uh, 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 such a memorable uh, time for me, yeah. And uh, so, so it was so cool. But that was, you could say, even with that album, and especially with me doing what I'm doing, you know, pretending that I'm, I'm on stage and I'm, you know, singing those songs of of, of James Cleveland, was uh, you could say that was the the start of everything. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. Within the, within the church, did you find that there was barriers? Because I know I was talking to a friend about this yesterday and I grew up in the apostolic church and during, I think I kind of missed the barriers a little bit, but I do understand that, you know, performing with other denominations mm. used to be a massive issue. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I know we were, but a lot of the young ones don't realize that, you know, I mean, we're, we're no. in a different place now, but it was, it was like, you can't go there and you can't sing with them. And it's, it was crazy. But did you, at what stage did, you, did that change for you? Okay. So, you know, com- coming from a prophecy, mm-hmm. you know, I grew up in prophecy church. Um, that was in the seventies, and 80s that was such a big organization anyway mm-hmm. right that i mean as far as i know i didn't know of any other church mm-hmm. <laughs> other than prophecy yeah. yeah because you know when we had our conventions people were coming from all over england mm-hmm. yeah um and i mean you know as far north as huddersfield and sheffield and places like that people were coming down liverpool and mm-hmm. you know people were coming down and and, and obviously those from the south uh, uh, and it was always in London uh, then it moved to Brighton um, so prophecy was my world in that respect mm-hmm. you know um, and so I didn't really know other churches until 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 the t- until the days of Psalms actually I didn't know about any other churches apart until the days of Psalms yeah when I started doing concerts with Nora Robinson and mm-hmm. Karen Gibson and we were traveling around and that's when we would go to other churches so mm. didn't know otherwise i think everybody has that story and it's a shame really because i think everybody has a king in their castle like i remember you you being like a um a gospel singer within your church and in mm. our church we had great gospel singers like david copeland and people right. like that, that you know was everybody had their their people you know what i mean but as a force, I think we were, we would have been a more powerful force if we united earlier. But you know, we were where we're at at the moment. We were, you know, we're where we're at. So we progress, yeah. we progress, and and there is a story behind it. 
but um I just sometimes I think I think like you said that prophecy was your bubble as it were I, I can say yeah. the same for mine it was like everything happens in that church you know convention was convention concert was concert jamboree was jamboree you know what I mean yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah so, yeah. so I where believe are you... I did... sorry 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 yeah. I didn't want to not to cut you but I believe I did have there, there, there was a moment though where I did uh, I'm not too sure where it truly came from but I uh, for sure there was a moment in time when I really did have this viewpoint you mm-hmm. know where you know yeah, yeah, yeah this is our church we are kind of the church don't know about the other churches yeah. mm. that kind of thing yeah um and 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 like i say that 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 changed for me when uh i i was start, i was singing in psalms and we started doing singing out of the churches and and or being at events where there were many other people from different denominations mm-hmm. and you know and 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 yeah for me i just realized oh man this is this is bigger than yeah um than I, than I thought it would be, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was an it was an eye opening experience for me, um, and uh, but it was a brilliant experience because mm-hmm. then I got to see, you know, and this was like, like I'm saying coming into the coming into the eighties, mm-hmm. that's when I really got to see the different groups, the different choirs, and um, and the impact that it was having. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, in the UK, mm-hmm. uh, because it was having a it was having a powerful impact, you know. So so it was great to see that. It was absolutely great to see that. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think I, I I know I spoke to you previously, but I remember I think my first kind of um, meeting or hearing you personally, um, I must have been about eleven, I think, and um, we. I know that um, LCGC had been around probably about 10 years prior, maybe mm. around like, they started the early eighties, I'm, I'm, I think. Yeah. Um, but then Manchester then followed suit in the early nineties. And right. we had the whole community choir. We had the mixing of everybody as one big happy family yeah. as it were. So my my eyes were open to what you were just saying. I, I then met, like my brothers and sisters that I would call my brothers and sisters, you know, as a whole from that point mm-hmm. onwards. Um, yes. And we did a concert in Manchester and we were learning songs for the concert. It was all original music. I think most of it was original music. And yeah. we were learning the choir bit. So we were just like, well, who's singing the lead? Who's singing the lead? It's like, oh, don't worry about that. Just learn the choir bits. So we, we spent time learning these choir bits. <laughs> And then we get on stage now and they're like, and now we have Junior Robinson. And I'm like, who? Who's Junior Robinson? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then then you come on stage, you come on stage and you sing the verse and everyone's like, wow. And obviously we had a mix of guys from Church God of Prophecy. So obviously they know you and the, the musos of that, you know, but I was very young. I yeah. was like, is, is this? We didn't Who's rehearse that? with him. That? We didn't rehearse no. with you. We didn't have no, no. rehearsal. You know? Yeah, you did not. We did not have rehearsal. And everyone was just like, and the thing is, we did it again. Did that that song was like the song for the guest singer, as it were. So then when right. we had another right. concert, we had Brendan Gayet come and bless the mic yes. with that song. So I was, right. you know, you're just turning around waiting to find out who who who, who is it that's coming on to sing to sing that song. Yeah. What was that experience like for you coming to Manchester on that, if you remember that gig? Oh, I, I remember. You know why I remember? I was just escorting a friend of mine okay. from Switzerland okay. to Manchester. Mm-hmm. All right. And when I arrive at this place, um, then I'm told, oh man, Junior's here. Um, yeah, Junior, man, we have a song. Good. Could you sing <laughs> no. that? That is literally, could you sing that? Um, uh yeah well what is it well yeah it's kind of like a new song you know i'm like oh god and trust me i was there with luke and we were going through that song a few times because like the fact that it was a it was a new song an original song Mm -hmm. for me that was like oh my life and i gotta try and i i gotta know this and learn this 
within a good couple of hours mm -hmm. in order for me to sing the song, you know? So pressure was on. The pressure was on. But, you, but, we, and... didn't, but we wouldn't have known that. Nobody, nobody in the crowd or even in the choir would have known. I mean, we knew because we didn't sing it with you. Right. But in my mind, I'm thinking they must have sent a tape to London with the song and, you know, <laughs> He would have learned it and then come up. I didn't realise how tight it was, you know? Nice. My sister. <laughs> that, that was that was probably the first pressure, musical pressure I ever had. Yeah. Where, you know, I had to learn a song on the spot, as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah, well, I'm I'm just hoping I did it justice, actually. Well, um, I'm going to have to look for that cassette because there's a cassette somewhere. My sister is really? renowned for cassettes, and so she's got a collection <laughs> of gigs on cassettes. Once I find yeah. out how to transfer them things, I, I, I'll be in touch, don't worry. When I find yeah, it, yeah, I'll yeah. send it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can, I do know that you can do that with cassettes. You, mm -hmm. can, you can now make, you know, make it digital, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, and I mean, I'd love to hear that again because, yeah. you know, <laughs> it was that was night. I'm thinking it was early '90s because the choir uh, disbanded after a while. It didn't. I'm trying to think because I was just I was in high school. I just started high school. Um, yeah. During that period, it was like '90s. Yeah. Maybe me '90. Around you about that so? time, I think it was a little bit later. You know, was it? I think it might have been a little bit later. Yeah, uh, because. Mm -hmm. the, the the friend who I was escorting to Manchester was a friend, well, somebody who I had met in ninety. I met in ninety five. Ninety five, just when I had done uh, the musical Mama on the Sing, yeah. Um, oh. And he came to London. He was me and he was meeting a friend in Manchester. Um, and I told him I'd come with him, oh. and uh, and and so I, uh, it was then. I'm, at least I'm, I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, well, because I'm thinking, and as we're talking about Mamra, I, I want to sing. I was gonna, I was gonna speak about that as well because mm. that mm. Um, I've I, I went to visit. I went to see the um, performance once. I saw it. Um, yeah, pretty young when I saw it, but yeah. I was really blown away by it and. It was just, you know, the, the level of excellence that went on during that yes. time. And, and and as a young teenager, I was just like, wow, these people are from the UK. And right. I don't know whether that's because we've always had this hierarchy of Americans being some sort of senior, superior in terms of... And mm. I don't think we've done that on purpose. I think sometimes we haven't we're, believed... We're all struck. yeah. So to hear that, I mean, we had obviously you had Shaka Khan, not obviously. So the listeners, right, this was a um, West End musical in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and Shaka Khan was one of the um, main um, characters in, in it. And Doris Troy, is that right? Doris yeah, Troy? Yep. Yeah, And it's right. the story of Doris Troy. So you guys Google mm -hmm. it. You've got Google now. We didn't have Google then, but you've got Google now. Google it. Right. Um, yes. So that Doris Troy um, and that involved quite a lot of UK um, singers and musicians well if not all I would have said mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I know that he changed from Shaka to Misha Paris at one time and then Denise Williams did it that's up. right um, and then I don't yeah. know I'm not sure how long it, it ran in its total but I do know that Luke my brother left Manchester to do that for six months that's right that's here. right He's still here in twenty. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's right. You know. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I, I mean, uh, the show ran roughly for about, I think eight, eight months because, yeah, seven, seven, eight months because we, the show started in February, but the rehearsal started from. Uh, the, the year before in October I think from September October it started mm -hmm. yeah um, so we did that and I believe it was maybe the ending of January mm -hmm. I think kind of like the ending of January or into February that's when the show actually started so so 
yeah, he ran for about yeah about six six seven months uh, in the West End, um, okay. and, it, and it was a great stint. It was a great stint. We, I mean, we all enjoyed it. It was it was fantastic. Um, so you know, uh, really can't complain. Um, really, really, really good. So you know, um, no, no, uh, for sure, all great memories, wonderful memories. Yeah, uh, so we can't complain about that. It was Absolutely it was amazing. Memories. I mean, it's so like I found. I'm trying to. I found something on YouTube recently of the one of the original um, songs, Shaka Khan song, I think it was, um, of the original recording of that. Um, but I don't know. I know there was an album. There was an actual CD album of the recordings. I don't know if that's that's right that that you, if you can get that anymore but i just think that was there needs to be some footage somewhere somebody must have footage somewhere of of that and 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 archive it archive it you know it's it's a yeah. piece of great work and yeah. a lot of the people a lot of people in there went on to do other things um yeah and just yeah grew, onto other shows grew as as artists and musicians and I think I think it was probably one of those moments where it was like, this is what we've done. You know, we it sounds great. It, you know, sometimes I mean, in church can put you in a bubble, doesn't it? And when other people right. from outside of the church um, yep. see and appreciate, you actually think, actually, I'm a bit all right. You know, I'm all right. Yeah. No. Yeah. You well. Know? Well. Please, yeah. Yeah. Well, this was my. This was my. Um, <sighs> If I can use the term, it's my reckoning. It made me realize that um, it was possible to make a living from music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, but I always said to people, because uh, people would ask me, oh, is it possible to make a living from music? I say, yes, for sure it is. But I said, it depends on how far you want to go. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and I mean that from the sense of, you know, if, if, if you're looking to do music, uh, totally from a Christian standpoint, mm-hmm. there's the possibility of doing that, you know. But the question is, is, uh, is, is how far are you prepared to to take this, yeah, in order for it to work, yeah. Um, but then you can look at it f- even on a wider scale, yeah, because it's it, it's not always just about working with uh, within the Christian scene. There's there's mm-hmm. other possibilities of being able to work, you know, with with music. Um, and so, you know, but it's always about the individual, yeah, how the individual feels. And, and, and I've always felt, or, or I've learned to understand that it's the individual that holds yourself, that holds you back. Yeah, it's you yourself that yeah. holds you back. It's not, it's not other forces. It's, it's you in terms of how far does your, does your belief or your conviction take you in terms of what you want to do and how you want to do it that's that's the key yeah no totally so what are you doing now i know that you don't live in the uk because i know you're a you're a, a hour ahead from me so i'm, I'm looking at the time right. Ooh. um so what what do you what does junior robinson do now what what are you all about now musically okay so musically um i still perform mm-hmm. um i still do a uh, gospel concerts i still do um other uh, various concerts um but the 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 main thing i do is that i i perform as well as as teach so i do i do choir workshops but i do also do uh solo workshops as well Mm -hmm. um uh, whether that's on an individual or within a group setting Mm -hmm. um so that's basically what i've what i've been doing for gosh well i mean i've 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 been full-time since uh since i did mama want to sing um and only within a short period of time did i go back to doing like a a a a full-time job Mm -hmm. yeah um but then i I only gave myself a short period of time to do that and you know so uh, at the end of the day yes Mm -hmm. yeah 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 you have to so you know so that's basically uh what i do right now so um and it varies. Sometimes I've been I've been invited by various choirs as a guest vocalist mm-hmm. uh, to perform with them, and and that would be in in various different countries. Um, 
so you know um and then on top of that i, I would then be asked sometimes to do uh individual performances um whether it's my own music or whether it's um uh cover or, or other people's music mm-hmm. um i was recently asked to uh sing a couple of songs on a um very well known polish artist album um who he had well very famous um artist in uh in poland who had recently passed away okay um a friend of mine was producing the album um and then he uh, he was kind of stuck in terms of what they should do with the album that he had started with him and i said well finish it get other people to perform the songs and uh, he says yeah it goes oh yeah it's a good idea he says yeah maybe you know i might call you uh to sing a couple of songs you know but i'll speak to the to the daughter who runs this guy's affairs and 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 see what comes of that and uh so yeah not that long after i i ended up performing a couple of songs on that album uh which has done fantastically well um in uh in poland uh it's garnered me a a, a gold and silver uh um and platinum sorry gold gold album and platinum album mm-hmm. um and uh, uh and and for sure allowed me to do some uh performances uh in Poland with with those songs so it's 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 been a great experience mm-hmm. uh and a, and a wonderful time um yes yeah, so, so that's that's basically what I do but um a lot of times it has the time my time has been taken up with just doing various workshops um uh, i mean even as we speak uh, in the next few days i will travel to france to do um a workshop there with uh, it's like a music a youth music workshop so uh, so that's where i'll be um come the end of this week for for a week um in france so yeah um so, so this is good i mean and, I, and i'm happy that i can get into that opportunity of teaching as well mm-hmm. um so it, it's a joy it's an absolute joy to do that and um it's especially when you introduce people to gospel music mm-hmm. if they've never experienced that before and, and uh you can introduce that to them and, and for them it's it's an absolutely memorable um time and 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 experience you know to be singing that kind of music so mm-hmm. so that's basically what I, what I do that's what I spend my time doing and i know that you were here is that a couple of years ago maybe i don't even, you know when you lost track of time i remember mm-hmm. that i wasn't i wasn't around i was thinking i was on holiday at the time but you came to manchester i think was it for the wind rush did you do the wind that's rush right there because my, yes, my, my was... mother was on there. My mother. Yes, yes. The Simit. She was on Yes, it's the Simit. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was on there. But I was, I had planned my holiday, I don't know, with my girls. And it yeah. just didn't work out. And then I was trying to get internet to watch it. And it just wasn't happening. But, yeah. Um, what was that experience like? Because I know that you, where, you, where are you actually living now? What, what country are you in now? Right now I'm in Denmark. I okay. Live in Denmark. So you've yep. been there for for um, a minute. So what was it like coming back to to um, the UK and performing, you know, with with your peers, as it were? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a wonderful experience. It was it was a, a, a real joy to to catch up with friends who I hadn't seen for a very long time. You know, mm-hmm. uh, especially those based in the Midlands as well as in Manchester. It, mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was a very long time. I'd been coming back to the UK, but generally always in London. Mm-hmm. But um, it was just nice just to, to be further north um, and just to enjoy, you know, the company of, of, of friends that I hadn't seen for a very long time, you know? So it was good. It was a really wonderful time. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a walk down memory lane as well you know uh with some songs that were sung and, and you know i'm a winers fan so yeah. um what's, I, your fav- I what's, a- your, what's your favorite winers track that's a hard question because you know you don't want to be um uh, 
Okay, okay. And, and, and I'm thinking while you're, while I'm asking you the question, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, oh, I don't even know, you know, it's, you know, you think of one, then you think of another and then it gets you, a bit. Right, so, right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it's a that tough one. one. We'll leave that one. <laughs> we'll leave that one. I, I don't want you to fall yeah, out yeah, with yeah. anybody and then they'll phone you like, Junior, what do you mean? What about that one? What? You know, you can get into those yeah. debates with friends. It's, it gets yeah, you long. can. But, it gets long. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. I mean, you know, people, uh, there's a lot of people that know that, that I was always singing wine and songs anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, uh, uh, but I, I would go with the songs that I was comfortable with or, or were touched, that really touched me and I was comfortable with singing. Mm -hmm. um, so Bring Back the Days of Yeah and Nay mm -hmm. and, and uh, Everything You Touch is a Song and um, uh, I've Come to Know You in a Very Real oh, Way. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Straighten My Life Out and um, uh, what's the first song? Uh, question is, and, you know, just, just songs like that. And, you give me those finders keepers was also a lovely oh, one. That's, I love yeah, that one. I love that one. I love that one. I love that one. But Junior, yeah, yeah. we're coming to an end, and My you gosh. know it's gone really quickly. It's gone really quick. Too quick. Too quick. We're gonna have to do it again. We're gonna have to do it again. But I'm really happy Most that so. you came. You joined me today on the Take Me Back show, and yes. hopefully we will catch up soon. I do hope so. I Thank really you do. so much. It's been it's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, then. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye, bye-bye.